for fans yeah. that are watching this that aren't familiar with Danny and Jason, you really need to watch season three. Find it on Eight Track or some old <laughs> yeah. but They're film, film reels. Yeah. <laughs> Janelle is out in a vote of two to nine and is possibly the worst Big Brother player ever still in the house. This is the Secret Alliance. All right, guys, look at this. We've got James Ryan here in the house. You're, you're hey, ready James. to dish on this season, right? I'm just trying to wake up. No, I'm incredibly <laughs> excited. There is not many things that I will wake up before 7 o'clock in the morning for, but... Um, for me, we, he did. <laughs> oh, that's great. For Danny for doing and this. Jason. <laughs> we appreciate Thanks. that. Yeah, Thank we were you. just reminiscing before we got going here that... James, we came to your first season rap party when uh, apparently that was a thing. They did that. They they had a party for the cast after the show. I've heard that doesn't exist anymore. Well, well, there's two things about this. One, uh, it's kind of awkward that you and uh, Danny still look the same. <laughs> no, we're vampires, don't you know? <laughs> after like 15 years, uh, I know. I think you like... look the same too, James. Come on. Yeah. Ugh. It's seven o'clock in the morning, but uh, the. I think the, one of the reasons rap party, I think Lydia threatened to kill someone at a rap party. Oh. Um, that was really? Oh, no. So it, Actually, it went way over the, the cliff. One of the things Dick is right about, but there was one of the people that wanted, oh, Lydia wanted to fight someone at a rap party. Uh. But uh, I also, I often wonder if the, the time that uh, Danny Kaser and I snuck into <laughs> the, way, snuck in the house after the, after the show. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. They yeah, we stuck in the house. Party. Yeah, I think that that probably uh, ended it for everybody. And no one would have known about it had it not ended up somewhere on the internet, right? Oh, no, we posted it. We didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> it was so That's much fun. Point. That's top-notch <laughs> security there. But, but when the house guests are out, they're not worried about it. Now, this season, we did have a, a fan scream something over the wall. Did you guys hear about all that? Yeah, little, we heard about that. Little house guest yeah. drama. They went into lockdown. Did you guys have matter. that in, in All-Star Season 1, Danny, James? No, we didn't have anybody yelling. We had now, it in our original season. In our season original three. season, we had that. In they said, don't three. trust Danny. Can you believe that? <laughs> Someone yelled on Big Brother 3, don't trust Danny. And Roddy said, they said, don't trust Danny. I'm like, oh, how rude why did you say that? It was so and funny. Our season had planes flying over, too. They were flying banners yeah. over. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. I think there might have been a banner plane in season six. I don't remember which season that we had to run inside because uh they maybe were, it was all stars i can't remember all stars really is a blur. this game is um now with enzo as head of household turning out to be one of the most predictable boring seasons since uh that season that paul got second place um wait that was cool um <laughs> <laughs> i know right? <laughs> well which one <laughs> there were two of them <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a paul dig sorry paul <laughs> Loser to loser, I get it, man. I get it. I, don't, I never even, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. made it past like seventh or something. so. But uh, I. So you're not enjoying it right now. I mean, I, okay, I know so, it does feel a little bit predictable, but will Enzo, um, with, like flipping votes, will he try to do something? Do you think? No, um, Enzo is in a perfect spot to just do what the house wants right now, and that's the problem with this massive mm -hmm. alliance that's been there since before day one. That it's just it's just safer. They won't There's, shake it up. They won't, they won't shake, shake it, up. it up. There's no wild cards. Everybody is sitting back just waiting for it to happen. But will it so get good? So frustrating. Because they have to turn on each other, and then I feel like the stakes are then so high. Don't you think that'll be a good game? So what I don't understand yeah. is why if, if – it's all about comps, right? I mean, back in the yeah. day – you know, players like myself and Dr. Will were notorious for throwing competitions and not being really good at comps, right? <laughs> but now you have to win a comp. So what I don't understand is why are these people letting these comp beasts continue in this game and not try to get them out sooner? And why the girls? You know, let's just say the ladies need to take control here and get they rid won't. of some of the men because they're going to build this powerful alliance of men and that house is going to be run by guys. Well, day one, they wanted a girls' alliance. They were talking about it. But then, um, you know, Danny and Nicole have, you know, helped make sure that all the girls have been going home. Right. Uh, I, don't, I don't even see these as, as comp beasts because the competitions aren't difficult. 
You know, look at the head of household competition <laughs> last night. It's, 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 it's roll the ball up a hill. <laughs> the other one was pushing beers down. You know, it's not like these are insane competitions. For example, where you're like hooked up, you right. know, in a harness, sliding yeah. across the backyard, like trying to balance, walk. Just That's true. Nothing. Or hanging on a spider web, you know, hanging something on like a that. Spider web. You know, these are things that it's just like, all right, so jump across like little li fake lily pads. I don't <laughs> understand. I just think that the problem is the alliance is so big and yeah. it's been there since before the house, since before the show started mm -hmm. that you have these people who are just willing to sit back and watch. Wait, do you think this really did start before the game? This was pregame stuff? 100%. All six of those players you do believe? Um, I can see a couple, I, but not I all six. I believe the majority of it, and now they kind of just – but all it takes is a couple good leaders to get everyone else to follow behind you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? That's, yeah. Well, okay. a lot of people don't, people don't realize that, you know, pregame alliance do exist, right? I mean, they had not it for a normal season, but on an all-star season yeah. where people <laughs> have met each other, they know each other. Right, yeah. but they had it on the, our first original all-stars. Um, we there were pregame alliances. Um, it, well, we did have pregame alliances for everyone except for you and Howie because you guys were <laughs> following because the law. Because we uh, honored our NDA. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good job, Danny. Following the Thank rules. Thank you. But it was funny yeah. because James was giving me all the dirt. It was hysterical. I loved it every day. <laughs> <laughs> We only had Danny DB3 on All Stars. Was yeah, yeah. So it was, I know, thank you. It was funny because James, <laughs> James would call me and I'm like, and who else is in the lines? And I was taking notes. I'm like, huh? Okay. Well, you know, I wish you guys the best. <laughs> and that's so, why week, week one, when, when you mentioned Janelle's name, you had to go up. I had to go up, but you saved me. Thank you very yes, much. I, I appreciate it. So now, you did your jaw that. drop though, James, when Danny walked in there, or did you think she was playing you in the pregame? You know what? I had came a, out. It, it wouldn't have been all stars if she wasn't there, but then we had to do the voting thing. So it came out, okay. you know, like we had to add they CBS announced who everyone was and then the fans had to vote. Right. But oh, it was leaked. Right. It was yeah. something happened on the website that if you draw your cursor, you saw the name. You'd see w which, which and ones. Do you remember won. that James? And what happened was, um, I read it on the internet. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I called the producers. Yes, I do remember this. I called the producers. I'm like, the list is out. And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're overreacting. I said, oh, really? And I started naming names. And he's like, I got to go. Uh -oh. I'll talk to you later. And I'm like, oh, my God. And so I was sitting there freaked out. And I'm looking at my cell phone. And then James called. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, Lord. How am I going to play this up? And so I'm like, hello. He's like, so a list came out. I'm like, it did? A list came out. I was lying. And he was like, so people are freaked out. I'm like, they shouldn't be freaked out. So it, it just came down to James is like, you know, people are like, they're going to target you. And I'm like, they're going to target me because I am honoring my NDA. And then I think I said, James, the biggest question you need to ask me is, do you have anything to worry about? And you asked me and I said, no, you're fine. Nope, sir. If I happen to be in the house, I still kept yes. my my contract. The, the funniest thing is I had uh, alliances with Allison, Diane, Jace. Yeah, the alliance, uh, everyone had alliances. But this was even before, this is even before CBS contacted me. I was having phone calls with Dr. Will. And well, that's Woody. great though. Yeah. And CBS so you weren't, you weren't even under any, hey, don't talk about anybody uh, or talk to anybody order yet. No, I think I was like the last person they called because they probably assumed that I was going to be the, the, the dirtiest one. But uh, they were right. So who's the villain you think this season, James? We right, keep so, asking. And, and so first of all, villain for the season. First of all, the thing about that was different from the first All-Star season to um, this season of Small Stars is that you had, <laughs> you had a competition on the first day, with, or the first HOH competition that had you know, two head of households that had to agree on a nomination. They did something. It, it was supposed to call out the pregame alliances because it was something that CBS admitted that was happening and knew it was happening and wanted to try to kind of speed up the show for the fans. There was nothing done this mm. year to kind of get the fans up to speed. So like when you saw Memphis, I think it was Memphis and Cody or Tyler and Cody, like in the first week, just being so natural together, yeah. it was obvious that they have had multiple conversations and this was some part of their plan, but there was nothing on the show to kind of catch everyone else up to speed. And I think that's one of the reasons why this season feels off because you haven't seen these relationships develop because mm. a lot of relationships developed 
outside the house. That's a good point. I got you. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty valid right there. Yeah, so the backstory that we normally get when strangers walk in there, we're not right. getting to see. These are people who've played game. together and then known each other for years. And, and so they come the in with shorthand. That's the most endearing part of watching these relationships build. Why I was watching the backstory, you know, of the Kaser and Janelle relationship over 15 years, so moving for everyone because you saw the moments that, like, Kaser lost his, Janelle lost her partner, Kaser lost his partner. They were targeted. They were the enemy and they came together. They pulled in this other alliance. That whole backstory mm -hmm. is what was so motivating when you realize why America loves these two so much. You know, Could it be because, that these people are just so cold-blooded, James, that they don't want to develop those relationships? I don't. I think there's only a couple cold-blooded people in the house. Um, Danny Donato is <laughs> playing a phenomenal villain. She's playing a phenomenal villain. As much as everyone hates Danny, when she was when she was like, "I'm doing this, I'm doing that," I got chills because I was like, oh, "She reminds me of myself in BB3." It's but so people good. like her in this house, though. They yes. sort of see they what like she's doing. They like me in my house like too, right, Jason. Right? right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. She is playing a phenomenal villain. I don't know how long it will go undetected because her, she's had, and I said this yesterday, but she has a level of cockiness that if it moves to arrogance, because right. she likes people knowing what she's doing. Mm. You know, like you didn't, or Danny, you didn't let people know what you were doing. Oh, no. You know, they knew in a DR. <laughs> Correct. You know, right. so that's the thing with uh, Donato is that um, she wants people to know. And I think yeah. that is what could potentially be her downfall. But she's playing a phenomenal villain. Um, she's also saying a lot of stupid shit that's probably going to get in trouble. Right. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the dance monkey dance thing from yesterday. No. Right. I did. I did see that. No, I missed all that. Danny, you want to fill uh, your co-host? Yeah, what, what happened here? So basically, Kevin came into the room and... Uh, I guess they were jesting and then they told him they made a thing called dance monkey dance. And when you refer to any person of African descent as a monkey, it's, it's disrespectful. Yeah, Danny's especially laying when you say dance, it's like, it comes back. It's, 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 a, it's a touchy thing. And I don't think they, I don't think it was, uh, it had any racial undertone when they were saying it and they didn't realize the impact of what they were saying, quite frankly. But it was it was pretty um, disturbing to say the yeah. least to watch. Yeah, and fans will pick up on that on the feeds, oh, and they, then it, they it totally it blows it up. up so yeah, it does. I mean, I think that was a pretty safe and pretty um, nice response, you know, that that you gave. But Danny's a grown ass woman; she's not twenty years old anymore. You know, right. and that was my whole problem. Um, you know, like when you had season fifteen, for example, like the season of racism before mm -hmm. season twenty one. Right. When you had like twenty one year old Aaron. And then you had like the couple of women that were in their thirties saying, I always felt like it was the 21 year old is literally just leaving her parents' house. That's probably the way people were, they were educated. There's still hope for them. When you're in your thirties saying like this, you've already missed all the opportunities to meet people different than you, to open yourself to new experiences. Yeah. I, I, they, I do. I think she know. does well. she know better? I think she should have known better to say something like that. Um, 100%. But do I think mm -hmm. Danny Donato is as racist? Absolutely not. No, I don't she's think not that season at all. 21, but mm -hmm. it's just that that was really disappointing. And mm -hmm. her, she's had a whole bunch of stupid little comments this summer that I hope don't overshadow her game. Because if she were to continue to play like this, it would be a phenomenal um, winner for, for all stars. That's okay. Fun. Our small stars. I love that, that you've coined that. Um, I, 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 we got to talk about you, James, because a lot is happening for, for you in life. No, it is. We've got the, the, the picture that's out on social media holding up a little baby one. Oh, yeah, daddy. Jesus Christ. Whoa. What has happened? <laughs> oh, man. I was turned into an honest man. <laughs> I was at James' wedding, um, and it was lovely, and I had such a good time to see him and his lovely wife tie the knot. I, I told him when, I, when he announced that he was getting married, I said, I have to come see this because no one's going to believe James Ryan is finally getting married. I have to witness this miracle. And I actually, I took time off. I flew down there. I was like, I need to see this. And it was amazing. It was such a good time. It was good to see you, James, your lovely wife, Stephanie, and Howie. Um, we had such a blast. Hurricane oh, so Howie was there? Oh, cool. yeah. Howie. Okay, cool. He was a groomsman. Um, he was a groomsman. Howie was a groomsman. 
Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. James, uh, can you, can you break any news? Can you tell us, do you know gender yet? Do you want to oh, drop that? Well, um, first of all, about the wedding, we'll step over that. Oh, How yeah, bad yeah. did I get roasted by my best man, Danny? It was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, like it was, it was out of a movie. It was so legendary, beautiful, because basically he acknowledged that James is a man whore, which we all love <laughs> here. And he was just calling us oh. out on the reality TV. It was probably one of the best speeches I heard. And I, I oh, mean, he I was me up. over. He like dragged me for Netflix for <laughs> the reality <laughs> stuff. I mean, it was, I'm just sitting there great. thinking, Stephanie was like, freaking out There's one moment where oh my god i'm gonna have to hold her back but uh it's actually victor g who won the amazing race it was uh, victor but, g from amazing race that gave this amazing speech wow at his wedding. okay he was my best man yeah he was his best man <laughs> that's awesome but uh so on october 13th tristan james ryan is supposed to be coming into the world so is, is a boy um it's funny i'm in here in my little makeshift man cave yeah i have to put this little <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> Your bassinet thing, I don't know, portable, whatever it is. Just that's make cool. sure when that baby is born, you guys don't be that parents that everything has to be dead quiet when the baby sleep. You live your normal life, turn on the TV, run the vacuum cleaner. You have to train your child to get used to noise. Sleep through anything. Yeah, sleep that's through good. anything. That's I good always advice. tell every new parent that. I said, <laughs> don't be that person that turns off every, shh, the baby's quiet. The baby's sleeping. No, just slam a cabinet, do your thing, the baby sleep through it, it'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, early on though, do whatever you can do to get that baby to sleep and to get some sleep. Those first few months are yeah. crucial. One, all, once, my, you know, all my buddies. You get like, three, four, five months in, then, then yeah. <laughs> all my buddies are like, get ready to just, you know, have two to three hours of sleep a night. I don't understand yeah. that. I didn't have that. I was, I guess I, I was such a great you, mom. You, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were very hard. lucky. So lucky. I had such great children. My babies were great. They, they slept through everything, so. That, that is awesome. I've, I've got one who still gets up really, really early. Like, Ugh. if she wakes up, uh, when I'm getting up in the early morning hours to go into work, she's up for the day at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Uh, yeah. 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 Let's talk about, uh, <laughs> uh, we know a lot of fans are doing this because they're trying to stay up as late as the house guests to watch Let's game and strategy. This. Yeah, let's talk about David. Ugh. Yeah, this, this guy has been described by some former Big Brother house guests, including no. James, All. As, as terrible, bad, All. the worst. All former house guests have said this. <laughs> Not some. So um, is he the All. worst in history? Are you guys wait. Yes, on? Okay. absolutely. So there's different <laughs> ways to, to look at worst in history. All right, right now, <laughs> David is messing up a lot of people's games, but it hasn't really had an impact on the show or on the actual game because every one thing is each week is essentially planned out by the alliance that's running the house. Right. Mm -hmm. um, he hasn't self-evicted with special powers like Luan did. <laughs> that's true. I'll give him that. You know? <laughs> he uh, <laughs> hasn't destroyed his entire alliance like how he did. Right. Okay. You know? So when you say, is he the person in the house with the worst game knowledge in history? Um, worst lack of self-awareness, worst lack of, well, he's not even the worst lack of self-awareness, lack of game awareness. Um, he literally is like Rick when he woke up in that first episode of Walking Dead. Like he is in a world that he does not recognize. Does not like recognize. things look familiar because he's like, I've been here before, but <laughs> this is not it. This is not it. You know, that's the best way to describe it. He just, he makes my head hurt. Oh. He speaks. I just, I just, sorry, James. So when, when he talks, now I've, I've been frustrated when I talk to players. Like Chicken George used to drive me crazy because Chicken George always thought he was this mastermind, um, Kaiser Sose, that he knew this game. <laughs> and I was like, he's playing us, right? He yeah. really knows what's going on, but he really didn't. But David... <laughs> Thinks he kind of knows, but he doesn't. And it's just like he is the dumbest player I've ever seen on Big Brother history. Put a stamp on it. I'll call it out. I don't care. Wow. Those are crazy. strong words, Danny. I don't care. He's so stupid. He says stupid stuff. And he just is rational. He, he just, the thing is, he thinks he's in tune of what's going on. And he has no clue. No clue. No freaking clue. And Can anybody... Sad. Can anybody rein him in? Because, you know, Tyler's given him some information, and no. then he goes and tells it to, he needs uh, to get, uh, Bailey and Davon. 
yeah. need to get rid no. of him. And so I said here, that from jump one. Will he be on the block this week? Do. No, he's, he's not going mean, to. He'd have to really do something bad. Um, I, I really feel like production is going to step up their – essentially their black ops game inside the diary room because they know if Kayser goes home this week, they're going to lose, I think, a lot of viewers. Or at least people are threatened to, to stop watching. They have they to do something to but, – to, But they'll watch. I really think they'll watch. <laughs> of, of, of course they will. You know, but the season is becoming – just boring and mundane in the sense if it continues to go down this with this predictable path. I think that they're going to start getting in people's heads. Like why are, why are the winners still in the house? You know, maybe not saying this out, you know, directly, but they're going to start implying a lot of things. Why are the winners not being targeted? Like, what about this? What about that? Because to go after Caser this week is a dumb, dumb. Cause he's move. solo. He's by himself. He's solo. Uh, he's proved over decades that he can't win competitions. You know, he can't. And when he does win one, he thinks he's all that. He's like, I won it all. I am the king of the house. Well, first week when he was talking her. about first week when he was talking about being savage. I was like, <laughs> bro, come on, man. Like, you like, need an answer you. calm. Bag it up. Bag it up. Hey, so this is what I, I find very interesting. This season or previous seasons, the fans were involved in something in the game. And I'm surprised they haven't even introduced this at all in this season hmm. um one thing the fans love is to have some say so in the game although i always felt like it's unfair to all the popular players um that are well liked but it'd be nice if they introduce some type of twist that the fans have a say so like we were able to put people on the block we were able to give people on have nots we were able yeah. it's just more i'm surprised cbs has not produced or done things that we can get involved in the game. Could they be waiting, though, until uh, the jury, when they're going to be sequestered, this is a group of people, they know they're going in sequester, and then America can do something with them, maybe bring one back. Or I, I, don't, I don't know what that would be. I loved all the America's Players stuff. Like, that's fun, where they, have, they make them do challenges. That was entertaining. Oh, my God. We, they should do America's Player. Yeah. Oh, but, that'd be so good. So I think if they were... Ugh, I always hate the fan interaction. <laughs> but we need it. We need it, James, this season. We need it. We need to play. The fans need to play. I need to play. I need to get in there. I need to do something. I need to stir some things up. Something. The problem is, okay, so here's the deal. If the fans do something, like let's say the fans pick a nominee or somehow the fans save Kaser, what's it really doing to the show? Because he's just going to be targeted next week. There has to be something done, not necessarily to, to save Kaser, but to break up that major alliance. There has to be a competition that forces people to make decisions that will call out, you know, these alliances, because that's the only way it's going to get broken up. Mm. Let me ask you this. this is I, my I, do you think, when you look at Janelle and Kaser, could they have done something different so they weren't a huge target? And let me just interject this. I said in the very beginning that Janelle's biggest challenges is her relationship with women, period. I called it out in the very beginning mm -hmm. is that there's somehow she needs to make sure she forged that relationship. And then what happens, we get in the house and we have this Nicole Franzo or nasal Nicole and Janelle thing happen. That's why I call it nasal Nicole get, start happening. And I went, damn, that's going to, that's going to affect her game. And sure as it, it happened, you know? And so mm -hmm. um, I think when a player becomes so focused on one particular player, they lose sight on what's going on in the bigger scheme of the house. I think every player that has focused on one player that they're so dead to kick out never wins the game. Happened to me with Roddy. Happened to Yvette with Janelle. It happened to me with Janelle. Everyone. Everyone gets so – when you get so focused on one player, you, use, you lose all concept of game. Because all you think, if I can get that person out, I can win this game. When it's not necessarily so, you need to look at the bigger picture and maybe, say, back it up and probably pick somebody else. I'm just saying. No, that's good. That's good. Especially for you know, somebody's future Big Brother player. Don't get obsessed yeah, with somebody fine. because that does derail what you need to do each week when all you can focus on is that They're one player. one yeah. player. Yes. And, and you that's have to look thought. at the bigger, bigger picture. And don't get so caught up like that person has to go because at the end of the day, that person, when you finally get them out, you're probably going to be out as well. So yeah. uh, I think about it. Chill Town was very genius. The, the, the fact that they kept Janelle in that game that long because they knew everyone was after her 
was a great move. But and also, so, she was doing their dirty work. You know absolutely. I mean? like Janelle's it, one of her head of household. She got rid of Marcellus, who was arguably one of the most loyal people to her. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, it didn't make any sense. Like, why would you get rid of Marcellus? Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, well. hey. Can we talk about <laughs> hello? When we talk about Ian uh, because people oh. love this guy. He's playing subtle. I love the moment we saw in last night's episode <laughs> of him playing dumb in the hammock <laughs> with with Christmas. It was the funniest thing, Ian. You know what, you guys? I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to vote him America's favorite player. I don't care what y'all say, but I love Ian. Ian is. Yeah. I just love him. I love because he's ruthless and he's gullible. He knows he has, he understands the game. He's quirky. He's, he's, he, he's getting his little swag sexiness in that one episode when he <laughs> winked at the screen. I'm like, okay, I see you. You're trying to wink at people. I was like, uh oh. His, this his is little... what's so, so crazy about this season. And this is why I think that the, the pregame alliances are really kind of hindering what could have been if you sit in there and you look and you're like you look around at your castmates you're like ian this is the guy that beat, beat dan, dan that literally ended boogie's big brother career on national television thank you like he beat he crushed the original winner of all stars and he yeah. said it i, I beat him first. he he actually said i beat him he what was it six to two or something that like, I won six to two or seven, yeah. or whatever it was. I was like, damn. Yes. So, and he was so damn, plus he was a professor. He's arguably the smartest person in the house, hands down. Yeah, for sure. You know? But he's just sitting there, just chilling, having a fun time, a good he's summer. He's doing the rock. And yes. Rock. No one's talking about him. No one no, has well, him Enzo on their radar. bringing him up as potential a backdoor because Enzo's going to put up Kaser and a pawn. And then backdoor Ian. That, that the moment yeah. someone says they're going to put up someone and a pawn, they're not old school. That's nope. the new school thinking. That's yeah. I'm scared as hell to nominate two people. So let me cower to you and say, oh, can you go up as a pawn? Yeah, that was very disappointing. If Enzo goes through with the whole case around a pawn thing, just put him up. I believe there was a genius back in season three. <laughs> Uh, oh, by the name of Dan Danny Reyes. Danny, Two listen men. to this. <laughs> the people up, you want to go home. That way, one is yeah. definitely going home. And it's so simple, and no one does it anymore. Yeah. No one yeah. does it. They're scared. Yeah. Who would you really like to see out this week, uh, James? If you were you were playing this game and could do it, Oof. put somebody on the block, get them out. Memphis. Well, once again, that would, that would obviously, you know, depend on who I was in alliance with, what I thought was best for my game, what I thought was best for my people's game. But I would like to see some of the dead weight go home. Um, mm. Because all these people, like your Christmases, your Davids, your Kevin, who I had such high hopes for at the beginning of the I season. I had so much high hopes for him. He's you so know, disappointing. I've always talked yeah. about how good I thought he was, you know, in his original season. Mm -hmm. Kevin, Christmas, David. Um, I'm trying to think of people I can't even think of, you know, because they're the ones who just need to go. That dead weight needs to be cut because those are literally just easy weeks for everybody else. Um, We're just looking forward to that alliance to start cannibalizing one another and within each other and start taking each other out. Yeah. I, I can't help but to think when Cody won that POV, Tyler and Cody has to be sizing each other up at this point, right? They have yeah. to go... Mm. In Memphis too, but the thing is, don't Tyler and Cody have that final two alliance? Yeah, they, but uh, come Co on, Cody man. and Memphis have a final two, though. I thought right? they have a final two, but I yeah. gotta say, Cody and Tyler have to be looking at each other across, you know, at the side eye. Be like, yeah, I'm probably have to get rid of you because you're gonna be tough to beat in this in the and we get to like final four, final five. So a good final four right now for I think the fans, in my opinion, would be the Nicole and Danny versus like Tyler and, um, of, of, and Cody. Cause they're kind of the four people that are running the house. Would yeah. it be great? No, I think it'd no. suck, you know, but, um, and it's, I think it's, it, it's too hard to make assessments this early because it's so freaking predictable. Right. Um, people who I think are in good positions regardless. I think Bailey is in a phenomenal position because 
just nobody is saying anything bad about her. I mean, David obviously messed up Devon, Devon's game. Yeah. Um, but Devon had a reputation of being very intuitive to the game. Unfortunately, she's known to be very smart. And the fan, they're, those players are scared of her because she does kind of pick up on things. You know, she's very, um, very keen to that. The only problem is she doesn't know how to use the information she has. Correct. And and she needs to learn to keep her mouth. Just keep m- eyes open, mouth closed. Just keep your <laughs> mouth shut. Yeah, like, uh, it's so funny. Because so much. Damn. Devon is that perfect mother in that sense that I would hate to be her kid because you're not going to get away with Nothing. She to everything you do. She don't know. Poor Kate is. She's like, uh-huh. I know you came in at 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> sister girl. See, that outfit, your shoe was on differently, and the way yep. you tied your shoe was right over left. And then when you came home, it was left over right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Poor thing. Exactly. That little girl, she ain't going to get away with nothing. Mama going to know everything about her. <laughs> that's going to that's gonna make her a great adult. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, if, if Devon, though, can work some things and maybe pull some people to her – and and start running the other side of the house or being a part of that, you know, to attack the other alliance. But if she just goes along with them, then we, we let them do what they're doing. So that is, I think, um, all of us that have played the game, we see that. You know, there has to be that moment that is definitive where the house breaks up, yeah. where exactly. it is an us first them. Because right. if not, we're going to have, what is it? Was it season 19 that was like that where every week they just had – you know, the same lame house vote, da 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 da, da all the way to the end. Right. Um, I, think I, like the, I like the hinky votes, though. I love that. That yeah. was genius. So who's the first person to do the hinky vote? Oh, that was I, Danny. Unless, unless uh, Will and Mike did it in, in season and two. What, I what did I do? Did I do a hinky vote? What are you talking about? Oh, I remember I did one in season six. And I'm trying to oh, figure you, out if one happened. Absolutely in that. season three, Danny. I did? Yeah, so you would, yeah, there's, there's conversation. We'll have to find some tape. I know somebody will find remember. it on YouTube. And you would say, I'm going to vote this way, or, or your vote needs to be this way. And usually you would do it just to say so that people don't know where that rogue vote is. Oh, yeah. I know Dr. Will tried to do it in All Stars with the Diane vote. And because uh, it came out like someone, it was set the one to whatever. And Dr. Cool. Will was... Well, Dr. Will was like, who did the hinky vote or something? He's like, who voted for Diane? I remember... Because uh, Will has a tail. Will does this thing where he presses his palms together and he does a nil, his hip. I hate to say that, but Will does have a tail when he does lie. He does this. Well, he's this. always lying. That's he's right. always lying, but yeah. he really has a tail when he, he, he presses when he's gonna, his palms. When he's going to tell a good lie. <laughs> when, he press, yeah, when he does, he, he presses his palms together, which is like, he, it's a tail. But huh. when he, uh, he were out in the backyard, he's like, who did this vote? He's like, I want to know who did that. And he did this. He tipped his head. And when you guys, everyone left the backyard, he was still there. And I whispered to him. I said, that was funny that you did that vote. And he looked at me. And I said, it's fun. It's OK. I know you did it. And it was one of those moments where I probably shouldn't have said that to him. I probably freaked him out. But yeah. it was one of those moments that I knew it was him. <laughs> but Will does That's have a tail when awesome. he lies. A lot of people right. don't realize that. Uh, last thing here, guys, um, with the hinky votes on this season, do you think that that's going to be trouble for, for Danny and Enzo? Um, or will that lead to somebody going, it must be David, get him out. Yeah, is it going to be good for, the, for their game? I think they're going to blame it on probably Bay and Day for them yeah. to use as an excuse. And, it was and Janelle did think that. She first thought uh, Devon and Bailey must have been the two Genius. votes. And that's when you realize how effective it was when mm-hmm. Julie asked Janelle that question. And she said, yeah, Bailey and Devon. <laughs> And she's like, no. And what I can't understand, James, which infuriates me, is these house guests vote like herd mentality. Like, yeah. when I was in my season, I voted the way I wanted. No one can tell me yeah. not to vote. I voted the way I wanted. I, I, people, I mean, I knew when Diana and Nokomis were up, and I ran to Diana immediately and said, I give you my word, I'm not going to vote for you. Because I knew Kayser was going to try to ask me to switch votes. And when I told Kayser, I was like, I gave her my word. He couldn't, he couldn't ask me to, to go back on my word. But I, I just weird that no one votes the way they want. Like, if I'm going to vote, I'm going to vote. I don't care. I'm going to vote the way I want to vote. I might right, not tell you how I'm going to vote, but I'm going to vote the way I want to vote. You're coming from two seasons where there were multiple alliances, and mm-hmm. there were so many different like, factors in play. Here and recently, in a lot of recent seasons, there aren't multiple alliances, or there aren't – it's just people are literally doing – whatever they're told you know they're they're 
there aren't any more pioneers of the game from what I see coming out um, into the show because people are, are watching older seasons. Um, when I say older seasons, I mean, you know, like 15 and beyond. And they're, ju they're just realize that that's the best strategy, you know, to come in there and kind of do what the house wants and hopefully everyone else will get picked off first. You got to play your game. You got to be individual and play what's best for your game. Right. Not anybody else's. So. Because what, what most of these players are doing is setting up a Cody Memphis Tyler final three or, or, and somebody else along with them in the final four. They're, right. they're not seeing that just yet. And I hope right. somebody opens their eyes. Well, and I think realize. Donato sees it. I think Dan yeah. Donato. Um, but she's part of it. So I think she thinks if she gets to the final four, somehow she's going to beat them all. But that's not going to, that's not going to mm -hmm. work for her. Mm -hmm. You have comp, comp beasts there. Right. Let's talk about all-stars. The actual all-stars. <laughs> <laughs> Like, That's season one of that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think it was, I don't know if, if it, was it was Erica you or, I that or came Marcellus up with, or was it us? I, I thought remember. you and I had to come up with this because it's it obviously was, that genius. But we yeah, used to have the <laughs> thing where we would make fun of the fans on the internet with our internet voice saying, me, 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 I don't understand what me, me, me. So we, like, always, we always knew that the fans were, they always critique players, right? And at the time, this is before Twitter or whatever, and they were on yeah. the, they will be on chat Websites. rooms or whatever. Yep. And they would go, and we'll sit there. One thing we will, the biggest complaint about us is that we, we, we didn't know why. We were like, why are we here? I hate being here. And we, we will go, oh, the fans are like, they are so lucky to play the game. If I had the opportunity to play again, they should play. So we used to do the internet voice. And so, and then we will start, you know what? Let's start a new thread. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Remember Jason? Well, it, it was so it was internet. still so new and and such a, a unique concept that people are watching us on the internet. We didn't really understand it, and I rem I remember coming out of the house, uh, and the, you know they had the producers and the casting director right, and right. Um, Arnold and Allison. That was when Ar Arnold was Arnold on, was on still the show. around the good yeah. days. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he is amazing. And then amazing. you bring his mom to the rap party and stuff. Um, it's, uh, so. Uh, he, they, they were like, hey, don't get on the internet. Uh, you're going to read some things and people are saying some stuff. And, yeah. and, and they really warned you about it. But right. as I've talked to players now, and, and we heard this from Rachel, Danny, when we talked to her on an earlier episode mm -hmm. here of The Secret Alliance, they're, they're thinking about it. We, we spoke to Keisha. Is it Rachel? But also Rachel, too. Oh, Rachel, Rachel. Rachel. Oh, yeah. I BB20? <laughs> I forgot yeah. her. And, but <laughs> Rachel sorry. was saying, yeah. Sorry, yeah, Rachel. look back through the archives. But Rachel okay. was saying that, you know, oh, you wouldn't play that way that you're talking about playing because of the fans and you'd be concerned about the fans. Are, are they allowing what happens on the internet to get in their heads in, in these more recent seasons? Yeah, that's a good question. Do you think, James, that players are being more cognizant of, what's, of how they're being portrayed out because of social media is so rampant now? Okay, so I have, um, I guess there's two different sides to that. I think that they're, when we say more cognizant, I think they're more cognizant of trying to create that moment. Mm. You know, they're trying to create that viral moment. That's what they're more cognizant okay. of. You see it with people with um, attempting catchphrases, um, stupid cliches, or, you know, a costume or an inner tube that they're wearing, you know, <laughs> fruit loop dingus, things like that, that they're just yeah. literally trying some moment. That they wow. literally have someone making t-shirts the moment they say something like that, you know, and selling it on their website even before they're evicted. Yeah, and I just could care less about that. I, I just, I just went in there. I just wanted to play, man. Did I just you to play? Did you catch that part in, in one of the episodes where Tyler mentioned that you know I'm aligning with other popular people in the house? Like that was, it felt like part of his strategy. I'm going to align with people who had been perceived by America, Akisha, uh, Cody uh, you know, himself, as as this loved by America group. And that was what he was going to do. Was, was that a, a bad thing? And again, where what, what America says is playing into how you're ga gaming and aligning. Well, I, I mean, if Tyler thought that, then he wouldn't have gotten rid of Janelle. No way. I, mean, like, I, don't think no he, way. I don't think he knows enough about Janelle. Oh no. You have, you have to be under in the middle of the core of the earth to not know about Janelle. I agree that, you know, this was season four for her to walk in the house. I mean, it, you saw Julie. It feels like Julie was fawning Julie's over Janelle. Julie's a Janelle fan. <laughs> Jesus Janelle. Christ. She was hurt. She so was like, the, oh God, the reason you would want to get rid of Janelle is what we were talking about earlier, in case there is a fan vote, because you know she's going to get it. Um, that makes sense. That is, 
that is something you have to do. The fact that they've been targeted incessantly since week one, when they're both in their forties, they're not, that's one thing that's so weird to me is that the targeting of these two old people for the house, yeah. you know, think, think well, about they, it. They, like, they never got in with the cool kids, you know, the young kids. That, that right, but then they're, again, they're okay. About them like threats, like, oh my God, Kaser is this mastermind and Janelle is a comp beast. Okay. But didn't win a competition. She didn't win a competition this season. No, she didn't. She, it's different when you're, I mean, we've all gotten there. Yeah. You know oh, I mean? yeah. Like, Danny and I talk about the aches and pains now. <laughs> oh, my God. Everyone's like, I oh. couldn't do one of those endurance comps where you, you stand yoga. on something for hours and hours and do whatever. If by any chance, if I ever, by a miracle, play Big Brother again, <laughs> And they introduce that slip and slide. I'm gonna put my cup down, cross my legs, and wait until it's done. Because I am not yeah. doing that. I will lose it. I would no. have to have double hip surgery. If I play that game. Well, that's the sure. thing. People are like, "Oh, James, I, they wish you were in the house to win some vetoes." I'm like, "Bro, I'm 44 years old. This you saw Memphis. I'm a 30 year old, James. Yeah, I think I'm in, I'm in good shape for you know a guy in his mid 40s. But <laughs> oh, it's like, my God. You guys, I'm you still young, like you little youngins. Y'all got gray. You know, <laughs> yeah, you, this, you wake up in the morning, you're like, man, did my shoulder hurt because that workout was good, or because I slept on it wrong, or I reached for something too high on the top shelf? <laughs> you know? <It's>, yeah. <laughs> or, wait a minute. My favorite. I'm sorry. We, we, I don't mean to digress to getting old, but you know how you, back in the day, you used to stretch and yawn and just like yeah. let it all out. Oh yeah. I'm scared to do that because I'm afraid I'm gonna pull a muscle. <laughs> I can't do a full stretch. I'm like, I no, because I'm scared I'm gonna pull a calf muscle. Or when you sneeze and you you get, you know, did I get a hernia? I mean, things happen. When you, <laughs> things happen. You, your body break down, boy. Y'all don't know. It does. Yeah, something something absolutely happened in, uh, for me at 40. It changed the, everything. Okay, um, let's do a little housekeeping here. We need everybody to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's when you're gonna get updates and you're gonna find out about the new episodes coming down. Subscribe to The Secret Alliance on YouTube. We're also on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We have a TikTok, whatever that is. That's what the kids are doing. Yeah, yeah, that's where they're dancing. So make sure you're following us everywhere. Um, and then we wanna tell you, CBS is gonna give us access to Janelle. So on our Tuesday morning episode, you're going to hear from Janelle. So we want your questions and comments. Load us up on social media. We want to know what to talk to her about. J James, uh, you know, you'll get in touch with Janelle, I, I would guess, after all of this. Um, what, what are you going to ask her? What, what do you want to know from her? Well, I just, I just want to, like, talk. I don't think there's any reason to go over the game with no. her. No, no. Yes. She's over it. She's over do you think it. she'd ever do it again? Yes. You think so? Oh, I, yes, I felt like this was her. Of course. This is my swan song. She loves the game nothing so much. In life, that Janelle does not come out of it better than she was when she went into it. Yeah, um, she yeah. loves she loves Big Brother so much. She is the queen of Big Brother. I am. I I will hands down give that to her any given day. I just think at the end of the day, I always think about what could Kaser and Janelle have done differently because at the end of the yeah. day, if if Janelle didn't mention Nicole Franzo, do you think it would have helped her in the game? Uh, if well, Kaser, go ahead. So one of the things that I think hindered them is that Kaser was a really late addition to, to All-Stars. So oh. I think that if he had um, been contacted a lot earlier, there, more have been, there might have been more time for them to solidify uh, pregame alliances. Uh, the thing okay. that bothers mm. me the most is, you know, the conversations I had um, – with Janelle, she really trusted Donato before the mm -hmm. house. Wow. And, uh, and I explained to her that if I was going in with her, I couldn't trust Danny because Danny and I personally, we don't like each other. That's right. just, you know. I don't know why and nothing against the Donato family. Well, but, but really quick, she was talking about, we both were talking about how much we wish that you were in there, Danny Reyes, because she knew that even if, you know, when you were denying it and denying it and denying it, <laughs> even if you did show up in there, that you would be a good ally for her. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to have seen that. I, you know, my mother and her mother have always said in All Stars, if only we would have teamed up, we could have just ran that house. Um, it was just an unfortunate incident that we were just two strong alpha females going after each other at that time. Um, but she got the best of me. Or but Erica. Wait, 
that this is happening. sort of what happened for for Janelle, though, you know, with but Nicole, Nicole Franzel and Nasal with, with, Nicole is not an alpha female by any circumstance. No. <laughs> Let me be clear of that. You, you got that right. Make we sure got this it is on yeah. the recording. I want to make sure this is print the t-shirt. Thank you very much. She won the game. I give her the game. She yeah. won the game, but she is indeed no alpha female. No, and that's where you have a lot of people. Um, Andy is one person, for example, who if you're like, oh, I don't like Kevin, it's, oh, you hate gay, half black, half Spanish people, you know, or, oh, you don't <laughs> think Nicole should have won, it's because you're a sexist. Right. And it's like, there's, everyone always has a problem with the winners. Right. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just oh, yeah. the way it is. But they played the perfect game for their season. Completely. And, and I would say that all day. Nicole is just always playing the victim. She's that level of narcissist where everything has to be about her. And that's what's so infuriating about it is she will still be talking about Janelle and how Janelle has affected her in some manner for the rest of this season, you know? And in reality, that's what's so annoying as, as a fan and as a viewer is just people that won't own it. Danny Donato is owning that she is a villain. So you have to respect <laughs> that. You have to enjoy yeah. it. And you have to, and, if you love the game, you appreciate it. Nicole yeah. is whining about everything. And that is everything. where it that, gets old. Yes. Well, the thing about the Donatos, people forget the original season. Donato's backstabbed everybody. In fact, yeah. you could probably find a clip where they turn around, they're playing the game, they go, don't trust the Donato. <laughs> Pretty evident, you guys. So I don't know why people are shocked on Dan Danny's gameplay yeah. because they did that. She backstabbed in her original season. I think they turned on Jessica and Eric and everybody else. And they say, don't trust the Donato. You can mm -hmm. find that clip because I know I've seen it. So she's, she is the villain and I'm here for it. I, I like Danny the villain. I, I know you, the fans are, you get, we need someone that we, we hate. So let it be her. And she's going to ride that villain wave, to, hopefully, maybe to the final I, two. We'll I mean, see. she really is one of the players being set up, you know, for a really good, at least run to the end of this game. And then right. it, it comes down to some competitions at the end. It's do you want a veto when you end up on the block? Do you control the final three, do, you know, with, yeah. with the competition? And we shall see. Uh, I mean, she, she learned from a master. In, you know, in, in her dad. That's one thing why I think um, Danny and I, Reyes, have always gotten along so well is because we appreciate that, that villain, you know, the, that person that owns it and just really wants to play Big but, Brother in the most diabolical way possible. But in order to be right. a good villain or even recognize as a villain, you have to own it. You have to own it and be proud yeah. of it. That's why Vanessa, <laughs> that's why everyone, like we, we always said Vanessa was a great at the game. But people yeah, she was wanted great. her to own yes. it, like like bathe in their blood Love on it. You know that. what I mean, right? And but so it was just never took responsibility. Never took responsibility. And when you watch Danny and those DRs, she is like grinning and she's loving it. So, <laughs> Danny, I'm here for you being the evil person. But people need to understand a couple of things about Big Brother. Okay, uh, when you're in that house and you make a decision, right? Even if it's a decision when you know you're attacking a fan favorite, it's, it's natural for them to vilify that person. They have to justify their decision making by vilifying, making that person be something horrible when they're not. So they, they can get the whole house on board. It's something, it's something that we, they do. It's, just, it's, it's something every house, every player does when they justify going against somebody or they kicked out, well, you know, they did this and they do that. That's why people talk bad about people after they leave because they want to justify why that person should yeah, go. They're, they're rationalizing to everyone why they were acted that way. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. And it's, it's just a common thing. It happens. It happens all the time. So your fans, when you're watching it, when they go to Janelle C or they're you know, jealous of Janelle, what they do subconsciously is they have to throw that player underneath the bus to validate why they're doing what they're doing. Nicole is, is guilty of Janelacy. Danny yeah. Donato is not. Right. Right. Donato just, she's just, she's, she, I found out, I didn't think she wanted to be queen. And then the fans like, you ain't watching the feeds. And they had, they gave me the receipts of her saying, I wanted to throw the queen. I'm like, oops, oop, my bad. <laughs> well, uh, She's still a villain, and I'm here for it. So, <laughs> so, so this season we're sitting back to watch uh, your, your evil Danny, right? Is that what? Yes. I mean, is she going to live up to the Donato? I think, I think she's going to be the Donato legacy. She's she's going to be that mean girl, unfortunately. 
Uh, if you guys don't like it, don't but watch. She, but she but, was, as you said, owning it. So it's not mean it's game. Don't, as, as we've heard it said, don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of the, and this is why I think that the more Danny's game comes out when the people start, you know, are reduced in numbers and you can give her more screen time. Uh-huh. One of my favorite things when, because I'd never seen Big Brother before I was cast, but they gave me season three to watch in, I think, the week of finals or whatever. And when I was another, watching, another shout out cool. to a great season. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Tell I me more. <laughs> one of the best. Just watching how cold <laughs> Danny was in the diary room where she's just like, it's like yeah. they all have to go. Like I just the countdown. Well, and, and it, it, was, it was, it was so good and so brilliant for television. And that's why they changed the, the, I mean, our season changed the way the game was played, where the jury had to be sequestered because they wanted people to be honest. They knew season four, people would not be honest in the diary room because it cost Danny the game in our season. Yes. Well, I had to do the countdown because I had to keep track. Damn, <laughs> I mean, honestly, you guys, yeah. that countdown was, I remember how it started. I remember everyone was upset and I go in the diary room I'm just like, good, that's one less person I have to worry yes. about. That's how I was thinking. And they said, so, Danielle, how do you feel? I said, well, you know, one down, I got nine more to go. And then the next week, I'm like, we got two down, eight more to go. And I, it was just me. A lot of people don't realize that there was a door in our house that had our names on it with magnets. Remember that, Jason? Oh, uh, yeah. It was and not I as would, fancy as the, the, the if, memory wall now. Yeah. I'm just saying we had little magnets. Anyway. It was um, low tech. <laughs> but I would take the magnets off because I had to keep the count in my head so the countdown was not just me trying to be like yeah i'm making it it was just more of me you know whatever I, it was just more of me keeping track i didn't know they were going to show it every freaking week she was scalping <laughs> people that's why she took yeah. those magnets those were scalps. <laughs> yeah those are <laughs> from the killer souvenirs ah huh? damn oh my god well it's certainly uh all right james needing, who do you think yeah need real question, to real pick quick. up in there we wait, need wait, to see question. the game pick up um, uh, so we're all i mean we're big brother old timers but yeah. do you think the new big brother fan essentially i think it came on when frankie started where we got a lot younger demographic mm -hmm. um we saw the the twitter scene just explode do you right. think those fans want to see that type of behavior you know from the danny reyes now the danny donato who is taking over the role mm -hmm. of like the current villain do you think they really appreciate that for what it is or do you think that because i think they would appreciate it if danny wasn't against janelle Quite honestly, yeah. I think if Janelle was put out of that equation, if we remove Janelle from that equation, because we all love her, but if Danny was playing what she was without attacking Janelle, the fans would have loved it. So let's see. Huh. Let's, okay. let's just wait. You know, she is the villain this season. I am shocked because I didn't expect <laughs> her to be, but then I'm like, eh, it is. It makes Danny. sense. It is a Donato. <laughs> So let's let's. I'm I'm all for it. I'm I'm yeah. ready for the bloodbath, y'all. We're go. into the party. Okay. Uh, who, who are you picking, James, to win this whole thing? We're, we're asking all the, the house guests, former house guests that we <sighs> talked to. Uh, that's incredibly hard at this point in the game. Um, uh, Danny and I wrote it down, though, before the, the show started. When, once we knew the cast, we, we made some picks. We sealed so, it in an envelope. So we're not saying until I have only been right the twice in my life. Um, okay. I'm wrong every season. Just well, so I was right you know. with Andy, and I was right with Casey. Um, okay. Like when I should, I helped cast Andy and when I met him at casting and he told me how he was just going to sit back there and be this little weasel and get yeah. away with it. I was just like, Oh, he's, he's, this kid's got the right mindset. He's going to do it. I yeah. didn't think wait, he was going to win wait, at all. I thought he was going to be a you're thinking, I, Did you do casting? I didn't know you did that. Yeah. I helped out with him a couple of years in Chicago, set up casting calls for him and um, did some interviews. Oh, yeah. and a lot of That's fun. very cool. Well, that was my yeah. life after the big brother house. Uh, I didn't work on big brother. Um, but I worked on, on some other network shows and things. And yeah, it's a, it's a pick, fun little game. I did, I did pick Steve Moses and Ian to win their season for sure. And oh, yeah. I remember with Casey. You, you were, you've been an Ian fan for a long, long, long time. Forever. But with Ian's Casey, great. I remember sitting there watching him because I was there when they were walking in. And I remember I turned and I went, that girl right there? <laughs> She's, that's a bad, bad mamma jamma. I just knew she was going to be a badass, right? <laughs> when I saw her and, first episode, I was like, this is my pick to win. Yeah, she was furniture, but I was like, the furniture is still there. But the fact that no, see, the, you always know who's doing well in the house when they have less DRs and no and one says airplane. anything. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that means they're in a good position. 
That's why with this David situation, I'm afraid this fool is going to force Gump his way all the way to the final. That's what I'm afraid about Kevin because Kevin's not even on the shows. They're making <laughs> up segments to put Kevin on the show. You know what I mean? And that's, But then again, there's still a lot of people in the house and a lot of big yeah. personalities. My pick, I, I just have this gut feeling that Bailey is going to sit there and stroll to the end. Because so. everybody likes her. She's I fine. That. If she, she doesn't if, need the money, so she doesn't even give out yeah. in, in that aspect. And my thing is, I, I, you guys, if we if somehow we get an African American player to win this game, I, I think I, I, I uh, wow. It should have been season three, but yes, fine. I, I, 100%. I agree. And Danny, I would have been there sitting next to you in those two chairs. And I still think that jury, even though they had sour grapes on our season, if it had been us, the final two there. Oh, Jason, you would have won hands down. I don't. I, I, I know what you say, but, but Danny, Jason. you played such a good game. And I guess they weren't respecting the game at that point in time. Jason, I, you I, played I, the perfect game. Jason, uh, Everybody sorry. has sour grapes when you come Jason. out of jury. But the thing is, Jason, 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 this is one of the reasons why, like, for example, people that don't really know Big Brother history kind of overlook the other side of your guys' alliance because you were yeah. the nice guy. But all those relationships that you were cementing and the information passing back and forth – Danny couldn't have done as well as she did if it wasn't for you. Yeah, I mean, she you needed the information that I was that bringing from ultimate, one side. You guys were that ultimate alliance that I think you just won't ever really see again because it no. was so well organic. done. And but it was people organic are on the lookout now for people like us where they go, oh, these two are playing cards and they say they're not in an alliance and we don't see them together much, but they do once a day hang out for a little bit of time and then they start suspecting so Whatever. first of all, I don't know. Brittany, you, no, you Brittany can't have a no secret idea. alliance again. Brittany had no idea the brigade was a thing, and they hung yeah. out nonstop well, 24 yeah. hours a day. I, right. I, I know, but don't <laughs> get it. what you guys yeah. did was iconic. Iconic. Thank and you, I think James. what people didn't understand is that we were two strangers. Two that strangers. That's the biggest part about it. Two yeah. strangers. We strangers. didn't know each other, and we developed this relationship on day two. <laughs> it was crazy. And I remember going in the diary room to the bridge. I'm like, we're going to, we're going to, I have this relationship with Jason and we're going to run this house. And they were like, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's yeah, talk thanks. about. Let's what talk you... about the show, man, sis, and da-da-da. I'm like, no. <laughs> that, is, that is my mistake on season six. When I had this Sovereign Six Alliance, I really believed that we were good no matter what. Right. So when I was in there talking to Maggie, Maggie about, or Yvette, whoever the fuck it was, about how <laughs> I'm going to put up Case, um, Howie and Rachel, that's what I, we were supposed to lie to the enemy. You're supposed right. to, who gives a damn? If anyone came to me and was like, oh, how he's going to put you up from the nerd herd or the friendship, I would have laughed in my head because I'm like, right. no chance. Because I expected us to have what you guys had because uh -huh. we had sworn it and we were all like targets. So why not join together? But then when that happened, it just obviously threw that out the window. Right. But, yeah. um, yeah, there. I don't think that we will ever see a repeat of what you guys want to name. All right, so we're well, going to you down. see it. That's he's, when you get showmances. Yeah, That's he's saying Bailey, which honestly, that was the showmance was what derailed her game on the previous season because Swaggy C came in and they they fell for each other hard and everybody went their strong their alliance their showmance mm -hmm. and they got targeted. So now Bailey's in a great spot and James Rhyme picking her to win. Yeah, I think she's in the best spot um, right now because you don't – the only clips you ever see of her are literally her listening to other people, like trying to – essentially – she's listening to other people talk about how their games have been blown up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and she co-signs it. She's like, mm-hmm, I see how you feel that. Like, I'm like, yes, yeah. girl, yes. Joke that <laughs> ego. Be empathetic. Feel that rapport. I'm uh -huh. like, I'm living it. I'm living okay. it, babe. She has that way – the way she brought David – and day together to hash things out. That's something I would have done personally as well. But she's more of support. So, you know, I think she has, she can wait, if she could just win a competition and just change it. I just need someone to win a competition. But so let's bring it right back. Right now, it would be the worst thing for her game to win a competition and to change things up. Mm -hmm. She's someone that, like Casey, doesn't need to win until later on. Yeah, but until one she thing needs about to winning win. competitions, though, it it opens the door for people to bring you more information. That's true, but it, Very good point. but in an all star season, um, it, it does put a target on you. Uh, and on the flip the side, though, I think you have need, to. You know who alliances are. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I, 
I think, though, that she would, if she's up against some of these comp beasts in this season, though, in, in a final two scenario, though, don't they have a stronger argument to say, I won this competition, that competition, and this competition, and that competition, and I brought Bailey to this point, and then she only had to win two competitions here at the end to get in this chair? I, I don't know. I don't I mean, care about comps. If I'm I judging work for harder. the jury, I mean, work harder, does. not harder. The yeah. thing the is, jury does, I don't know if the jury thinks about comps as much. We don't I know what the jury is right now. Um, yeah. right. The problem is, is that it looks like these guys are keeping all their people. Jury management is the most important thing. You Absolutely. Know I mean? That was what obviously pissed me off so much about Howie and why, as much as I love him, I still think he was one of the worst. <laughs> well, his move was one of the worst moves in Big Brother history. But he cost you guys the game. Yeah. He, he cost six people their shot at winning because he gave yeah. the jury numbers to the other side. And right. unless people start sending home, you know, this um, six person alliance, they are going to have the votes. They're going to control the jury. And you yeah. can win every single competition, single handedly eliminate every one of those people. And you still don't have the numbers in the end. Is, is Bailey going to work to get rid of, of David because she sees him as a weak link who, you know, has she maybe. Won't do it. Out of she's not going to she come. Won't. She's not going to. Everyone come. in the okay. house should see David as a weak link. Weak link. Um, I mean, there's probably not a, a weaker link. The, da- the most dangerous player in that house right now is David. Yes, he would yeah. get Hoh. All hell would break loose. He, he is the most. It's like Chicken George when he won Hoh. It's like it's like he is the most. De- he needs to go. I, I'll right. say it. I don't care. David needs to go. He's ugh. get him out of there. And, and what if he uh, were to get him out of there, fans? Get him out of there, and someone buy him CBS Access so the fool can watch previous seasons. What was he doing for <laughs> figure two out how to weeks? play? What was he doing for two weeks when he was in sequester before the show? I, I, I cannot believe he maybe he has to be lying. Please, baby Jesus. So I thought he was lying. like, okay. First of all, can we? Um, the person running David's Twitter account is <laughs> gold. I'm talking about literally. This is someone who owns the fact that this guy is clueless. And literally, just it, one of my favorite follows on Twitter. Um, <laughs> it is. Like, I, I watch it, and I'm just chuckling. I'm like, yeah. It's so good. It's so good. He's slamming himself. It's just so funny. Yes, it's the and he's thing. not, doesn't ever go after people that are talking. Keeps it, he or she, whoever it is, keeps it really, because I reached out to them in the first week, and I was like, hit him up in the DMs, like, listen, met David. I thought the guy was great. Um, but he is this season, so if you ever need anyone to talk to, like, I'm here for you. <laughs> but they have been owning it, doing yeah. such an incredible yeah. job. Yeah. All right, I got to find the, their, the Twitter feed. I'm not following it. I got to follow it. This person needs to run, like, social media accounts like, for major brands. Because Maybe I can. No matter what you do, you can send out poison baby food, wipe out, like, 100,000 little babies. And this person is going to still help somehow put out good PR about you. Like they are just wow. Amazing. Yeah, this person. That is amazing. is amazing. All right, James, we're going to let you go. Get back to life. You got to. Thank you. We get Janelle stuff next to week. build and prepare for for little. Well, oh, I actually have a couple more interviews today, so I'm looking forward oh, to. But wow. those, those wow. I'm going to shower for. All know? right, make <laughs> that baby, make you. that the real make James your baby mama. Ours. I need you to make your baby mama some pancakes this morning. I need uh, to know. Okay. I need a picture. Oh. You keep bringing up the pancakes. I don't know if you saw this. Um, a couple weeks ago, she was like, I want chocolate chip pancakes. That's what I was going to tell you, chocolate chip pancakes. Well, we didn't have chocolate chips, so I literally, hold on, I went to the chocolate chip cookies she had and broke them apart and pulled oh. out the chocolate chips. Well, that's love. Chocolate this chip is love. Pancakes. That's love. That's what this baby is doing to you, James. This is good stuff. And on that. Good, James. <laughs> now we're out, James. We- James, we'll we need to see your dance moves. We're going to so play for, some music for fans, For fans yes. that are watching this that aren't familiar with Danny and Jason, you really need to watch season three. Find it on 8-Track or some old <laughs> VHS. But, They're film, film reels. <laughs> yeah. But these two are some of the icons of Big Brother, and they Come are on. why the game is ex- as, as successful as it is today. That's why we do what we Thank do. Thank you. Thank you, James. We're All out, right. James. Come on, let's see your, your moves. Do you dance, James? We'll play do the music. Move? At yeah, what's your room? What's your move? You don't have, the, I don't even hear any music. At the you don't club, have to. what do you do? What's your move? You what's move. your signature, James? Oh, move? at the club, I'm sitting there yeah. like this, watching everyone, making sure that everything is just perfect because this is my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in the back. If the <laughs> DJ gets out of line, he gets a smack inside the back of the head. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> bye, James. <laughs> See ya. Thank you, James. Thank you. That was awesome. No, you don't listen to EDM. So.
right. <laughs> called you out. I, know. I don't know. I don't know any of that music. I'm so sorry. I'm so old. Thank you. Uh, Love you, you should EDM trash. All right. <laughs> Bye. Love you guys. Thanks for having me on here. Hate you more. Hate you the most. <laughs>